theCUBE is We're back, this is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's coverage of the VTUG winter warmer. The cube goes out, we extract the signal from the noise, and we're here at Gillette Stadium. Jeremy Wheeler is here, he's an innovation architect at Dairy Lee. Jeremy, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, glad so, to be here. Uh, thanks for coming on, and, and um, why don't you start with, with Dairy Lee. It's a, it's a marketing and services organization, but maybe tell us a little bit more about the, the company and your role. Sure, Dairy Lee is a milk marketing cooperative out of Syracuse, New York. I was formed in 1907, and originally it was just a way for farmers to work together to improve their milk price. Uh, over the years it's evolved. At one point we had processing plants, then we got out of that business, and now it's, uh, we coordinate everything from uh, the sale of the milk, the pickup of the milk, uh, delivery from farm to the plant. We also offer health and workers' comp insurance, uh, a lending agency, uh, auction markets so that farmers can auction their cattle and their other products, and really, we try to be the one-stop shop, top to bottom, for everything a farm would need. Right, so, so Jeremy, I I'm guessing in 1907 <laughs> that Dairy Lee didn't have an innovation architect. Can you tell us no. a little bit about what that is and your role within the company? Sure, my role is to identify uh, uh, technologies and evaluate the uh, positive impact they could have on our business, and then, uh, it uh, also involves a lot of network architecture. Okay. So it's a little play on, on network architecture. Okay. Could, could you give us a little bit of a, a snapshot as to kind of the size of your organization uh, from an IT standpoint and, and what kind of gear you guys use? Sure, We're, we uh, have about 500 employees. We also service uh, uh, anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 farms uh, in various ways. And then our architecture, since uh, 2005 or six, we started moving to VMware. Uh, we were 100% or as close as we can get to 100% virtual on the servers by 2008. And uh, really everything except uh, phone systems or anything that would require some sort of a, a card or connection that can't be virtualized is virtualized. Uh, we uh, until recently used uh, HP SANS and, and we provide uh, you know any kind of uh, web services, SQL services, Exchange, SharePoint, uh, you know, we have all, if there's a piece of software out there, we, uh, a major piece of software, we probably support it. So talk a little bit more about your business. So you've got this <coughs> cooperative, 1,500 to 2,000 farmers, uh, in, in all or mostly in upstate New York, is that right? Or no, we, uh, we span from Maine down to Virginia and over to Ohio, so we're, we're all of the Northeast. Yeah, okay, and, and so logistics, um, you're, you're providing shared services. Uh, is, is there a marketing component as well that you guys do, or sort of advocate for? We are the marketers. We'll, got milk. we'll uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We uh, uh, coordinate all the purchase of the milk from the farms to uh, plants. You know, Hershey Kraft. You name it. If, if it has milk, we probably sell. So, to what them. are the what are your clients asking you for? What are the demands on your on your business? We have uh, uh, we have to do the milk testing. We work with a. Uh, another cooperative that does the testing. We provide the test results to the farms through a web service. Uh, that testing is what determines how they're paid on their milk uh, based on you know, bacteria, butterfat count, anything like that. So, uh, and really the farms uh, are all their own business and for that reason we have to be 24 seven because uh, they get to decide their hours and we have to be there to support it when they want to work. Okay, so, and, and tell us, paint a, uh, a picture. You, Stu asked you about the infrastructure. You talked about the virtualization. <coughs> Maybe give us a little bit more insight as to what the infrastructure looks like. Sure, we, uh, we're providing um, exchange, like I said, exchange SQL. We're, we're uh, uh, all virtual. We have nine uh, massive ESX hosts, and now we're using the uh, SimpliVity OmniCube for our storage and for some of our, our process power, and uh, we, do virtual desktop infrastructure, so we're doing VDI and servers, and uh, uh, we're running around 500 VMs across those nine servers and on that storage. How and much storage? Uh, now we're running around 60 terabytes of storage, and we're also replicating that to a disaster recovery site. So, so Jeremy, can you uh, the project that you did for SimpliVity, <coughs> My understanding is it, it, you didn't start out going looking for, uh, you know, kind of some new, you know, server-based architecture. You didn't ask for hyperconverge or anything like that. Um, it started looking for backup, is yeah. my understanding. Can you can you walk us through what was what was the challenge you were facing, and, and how did you come across uh, SimpliVity and what was your decision criteria? Sure, the backup solution we had was. Uh, uh, problematic, you know, uh, our backup administrator was spending a lot of his time uh, just trying to keep the backups chugging along, and he also had a full-time job of managing our tech support group, so 
really we were trying to alleviate the workload on him so he could focus on more um, beneficial things like, like the support side. And the project started just to identify a backup solution and we had a, a parallel project to identify a DR solution. And it was a six month long project and we had actually made a decision to go with an appliance based backup that would replicate offsite. Uh, but really it was just offering backup and it was just offering it for the servers, not for the desktops. Uh, we had made our decision but hadn't purchased and, and we went back to one of our vendors and said, okay, we need storage, we're starting to work on our DR project. And he said, well, you know, slow down a minute, I just saw something at VMworld, you should check it out. And he had us go through a SimpliVity demo and we were sold. It, it, uh, uh, it included the backup, it, it solved our DR issue in the same box. Uh, it has a, a major dedupe on both the backup and the live storage and it, it provided compute power that we didn't, um, we hadn't budgeted for, and it was a refresh for our SANS, which wasn't even on our radar at the moment. So make sure I understand this. So you, you started with a backup project, mm -hmm. uh, and you essentially ended up with an OmniCube, <coughs> which was doing obviously backup, but, but you got uh, some added benefit, it sounds like, the compute, the converged infrastructure. A lot of added benefit, it was really. For the same cost that it would have been to, to do the backup? Almost an identical cost just for the backup. And, and so you essentially recreated your entire infrastructure we did, strategy. We did. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of serendipitous. You start with a backup and end up with a new infrastructure strategy. It was a great find. <laughs> it was a great find. And, and originally we hadn't intended to back up the virtual desktop infrastructure at all, just servers. Yeah, that was a trade-off that you had to make because... Because of the, could, the yeah, cost. Yeah. Uh, but with the OmniCube, the amount of storage and, and with the, the way it dedupes, we were able to actually back up and offload the... Uh, uh, replicate the VDI over to the uh, hot site as well. What about RTO and RPO um, objectives? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Uh, what, that's obviously <laughs> always a driver when you start with a backup. So yeah. where were you and, and where are you now? Uh, going through the project, we went through each of our business units. Dairy Lee includes you know, multiple business units and, and we got a sign off on each of them uh, accepting a, up to a 24-hour loss uh, if there were a disaster situation. Don't you love those discussions? How much data do you want to lose? Yeah, how much uh, can are you? Are you willing to lose? Uh, what? None. Uh, what do you want to pay for that? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so 24 hours was sort of the... Where that was the, the minimum that, that the, we had. The RPO. Many, yes. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, with this solution, we're, we're sticking to that for now. Uh, we're still early in it, but we're going to watch our data growth and assuming that the dedupe functions the way we think it will, uh, we're going to go back and reevaluate those RTOs. We think we can do you know, a much lower RTO, maybe an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, that was RTO. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. okay, what about RPO? Um, sorry. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, so, in other words, uh, the, the, the RTO is the recovery time objective, time, time it's going to, so within 24 hours <laughs> you'll be back up online. Yes. Right? What about the amount of data that you, you know, the, the business is willing to Oh, to I'm sorry, lose, that, you know, that is the RPO. Yeah, okay. Uh, from so the 24 hours, we, th we think we can go back through, uh, after we see how the uh, dedupe is functioning and how we're doing on storage, we think we can get down to, you know, maybe hourly backups and, and get it down to where there's only an hour of loss. Right, because I was going to say, 24 yeah. hour RPO for a business line, I mean, I wouldn't settle for that. I mean, come on, we can no. do better than that, right? So you're saying. We think we can get it down to an hour. And, using and some kind of snapshot, like. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the backup and the OmniCubes, you know, we went from uh, our biggest servers, one and a half terabytes, and it was taking, you know, if we started the full backup on a Friday, we'd hope it was done by Monday. Uh, now it's taking under 60 seconds. So we're able to do a full backup, you know, every hour if we choose and have that, that change replicated to and the And the software site. for that? That 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 uh, that snapshot capability that it's CDP? all included in the OmniCube. That's part of OmniCube. Yeah. Okay. So you get the okay the if backup it, infrastructure. You get the the storage, the networking, the compute infrastructure, and the backup software capability. Correct. All in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our recovery time objective is actually uh, even lower than that. I mean, we can do a restore and uh, same as the backups under 60 seconds fire the VM back up, and, right. and we've done multiple test restores already yeah. in our DR site, and it's it's incredibly yeah. fast. So, so Jeremy, I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about the implementation. If you went in with kind of a, you know, just back up and DR, it seems a very contained, understand what part of the organization you need to have that as opposed to a complete refresh. You've got migration from the old array to the new array. So it seems like it would span, you know, it, was it a much bigger project involving more of the team, or, you know, what, what was your experience? How long did it take? Kind of, can you put a rough, how many man hours you put into it, or? It didn't take long at all. I uh, it, the one piece we had to add is you need a, a 10 gig 
uh, backbone for the OmniCube. Uh, so I went through and, and they had shipped me the equipment. I racked the uh, uh, servers and I racked the, uh, the switches and I had all the wiring done when they got there. Uh, maybe it took me 40 hours to get all that built and put together. And then Warren from SimpliVity came in, uh, fired up the cubes and configured them in a day. And then the second day he was there was just training and us asking questions. Okay. So I was in a session earlier this morning listening to uh, uh, Chris Harney and Tony Asaro. They were you, I don't know if you, you were in that session or not, but they were talking about the cloud and the, the cloud as a potential threat to IT and IT roles. And I kind of wanted to have that discussion with you. So you've got essentially this converged infrastructure. You, you, I don't know if you'd consider it cloud-like or more services oriented. I don't know what, what, what term you're comfortable with. I consider with. it private cloud. Okay, so you consider it a private cloud. Um, and and probably building automation, you know, in in as well. So, do you feel like you you're closing the gap with uh, public cloud uh, service providers that um, that you're able to add that type of value to your organization? That it is a reasonable strategy for you guys to continue there? Or what's your take on the whole public cloud? Is there a place for that in your organization? There is uh, the OmniCube ties into public cloud really well, especially you know, Amazon uh, and those kind of services. So if we chose, we could add a, a third co-location site with, with Amazon and, and start replicating to there and make an Amazon um, uh, DR site part of our federation. Yeah, so, so actually that brings up a good point. You, you were at a two site location. Yes. You know, my experience is that you know, adding kind of replication mm -hmm. onto traditional storage arrays was almost an afterthought. Um, yeah. One of the things that I found pretty interesting about SimpliVity is most of their customers you know, are multi-site. You, you, you're, the, you're the network guy, you own responsibility for that. Yes. Can, you, can you tell us you know, how was that to kind of set up the, the, the two sites and you know, walk us through a little bit of that? Yeah, the two sites were, uh, we actually work with a, another cooperative and they do our, our lab testing and we came up with sort of a reciprocal uh, agreement where they provide us space in their computer room and we provide them space in ours and we share the cost of a 100 meg point to point connection and uh, it was great that we had the site we were having a hard time getting uh, a good DR plan in place you know we had some replication going on using SQL mirroring or uh, DFS on our Windows file servers but there were huge gaps especially exchange and uh, those kind of services so uh, this, since the, the backup and replication sort of happens at the hardware level and it does it all for us, now every server that we have on there is replicated to the other site and vice versa. So what do you think of this venue, Jeremy? We're here, oh, that's uh, great. My, my partner John <laughs> Furrier is, I'm sure, really jealous, and, uh, but he's, I'm sure he's plugging for a San Francisco uh, Patriots uh, Super Bowl, which uh, I don't know about that second part of that, Stu. But, um, so. <laughs> So we're here live at the, at the VTUG, we're here at Gillette Stadium. Uh, uh, Jeremy Wheeler is with Gary Lee, and um, unpacking a, a case study of how they're essentially sort of stumbled in, if I could say, to, yeah. to converged infrastructure. So, so going forward, do, do you feel like um, the, the services that you can provide you know, we'll be able, as you continue to automate, you built that, that private cloud, it sounds like you've, you'll over time make connections to the, to the public cloud. Will this, will this carry you through the next decade? Or how much visibility, how much runway do you think this approach gives you? Our plan was uh, uh, three years. We wanted to have enough storage that we could handle all of our backup in DR for three years. And again, with their, their dedupe and compression, it looks like we're going to possibly go beyond that. But if we find we need more storage, the great thing with the OmniCubes is we can buy another, plug it in, and it just expands the available storage. It becomes part of the federation, and, and uh, you expand it in place. It's, it's not a major deal to, to so, add more. So, so I'm wondering if you could paint for us, we paint a little bit the before picture. You had you know, the poor backup guy kind of had his full-time job, yes. and backup was taking over that. Um, you know, you're the network guy, and it sounds like you were you know, heavily involved in this. You know, wh what did your team look like, and how much time are you spending on the infrastructure today versus what you did before? <laughs> Uh, my team is myself, and then we have the tech support manager, and he has three more tech support personnel under him. And he was easily spending 75% of his time just trying to, to wrestle backups into working. And uh, our, our strategy after we put the OmniCubes in was to move the problem servers first, the ones that were having problems back up, backing up. Uh, it was actually such a quick migration, we just kept going. And within a couple weeks, we had 90 servers that we had storage vMotioned from our old storage to the OmniCube, and uh, we've eliminated, he still has servers in the old backup solution until 
until we decide to move more. We're, you know, we're still cautious in that we want to see how the data um, availability pans out before we move everything on there. But uh, uh, his problems have gone away with the backup, and he's actually able to focus full time on managing his support group and handling support. What about Flash? Are you are, are you are, are you experimenting with Flash, or some of your applications sort of at that point where they can benefit from Flash? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. We haven't really ex experimented with Flash, no. So, so you don't see that on the on the near term horizon. Is it, is it, is it too expensive, or maybe well, not enough experience? And there's some Flash it? baked into the solution that you've got. Correct? There is, and it's not something we can actually manage. Uh, it's actually handled by uh, OmniCube on the back end, and and it looks at the things that are being accessed the most, and uh, tries to load them into Flash so that they're more accessible. But uh, on our in our personal management, we're not actually getting yeah, from a into trying to manage from it. From an application development standpoint, you're not trying to explicitly uh, uh, exploit the flash infrastructure Correct. of the OmniCube. Correct. And, and that's because your performance is fine, or do you see that, that so when, when, you, when you virtualized your infrastructure, it didn't, uh, it didn't affect performance in a negative way? I wonder if you could talk about that a bit. No, we had actually, we didn't really have a performance issue uh, you know, prior to this, what we had was a space issue. So we knew we were coming up to a point where we'd have either have to buy a new SAN or um, you know, a really big new SAN to replace the three that we had. And uh, uh, the OmniCube actually did that for us. It replaced all of the SANs that we currently had. And the performance, we saw no, no decrease in performance at all. And, you know, we didn't see an increase, but that's because we didn't really have a per performance issue to begin with. So, so Jeremy, la last question I have for you is, you know, you went through this project, uh, the project itself seemed a little bit of a surprise, so what lessons learned do you have? You know, if, if you look back on it and said, boy, I, I learned this in the process, or if I could have changed something, or advice that you would give to your peers out there, what would it be? You know, it's hard to say. The process is what it is, and, and I'm glad it led me to SimpliVity, because this was, you know, we never expected a solution that would handle so many of our outstanding issues. We, you know, we knew we were running short on storage, but that wasn't even on the radar yet. W that wasn't a project, and and I guess, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't change the process we went through because I'm glad where we ended up. But I, I would tell people, you know, if, if you're looking at backup, or DR, or storage, sit through a demo with SimpliVity because probably for a, a, an equivalent cost to what you'd pay for any one of those, you're going to get all three plus some compute power on top of it, and it's just a really, really full featured product. Jeremy, how about some of the, um, I wonder if I could ask you from an IT practitioner's perspective, there are some, these, we always talk about these big mega trends, cloud, mobile, social, you know, big data. Obviously, uh, cloud is something that, you know, we've talked about a little bit here. What about mobile? How is mobile affecting sort of what you do? Uh, we're, we're big into mobile now, especially iPad and iPhone. Uh, we uh, have 70 plus field staff plus their management group equals about 100 people. And we didn't really have a consistent training platform for them before. Uh, it was kind of sink or swim when they came in. So uh, our, our VP of HR went through and, and created this, uh, we call it a knowledge library. And it's, it's just a glossary of all the things that they should know. And then references to documents that, and we're talking 10,000 pages of documents of government, FDA regulations, anything else they might need to know. We digitized it all put it into a SharePoint site, and then using existing iPad apps, we're now able to distribute all of that live to all of our... Uh, so you didn't even have to write the apps. <coughs> they just no, uh, no we were able to use all store-bought, and so we've got a huge mobile workforce that we're managing the content on their iPads remotely, and, and mobile is, is, uh, is huge for us. As a practitioner, where do you get your information um, on some of these, these trends? Uh, and, and do you use, for instance, do you use social media? Uh, I use LinkedIn for social media, but I attend a lot of these type of events. Mm -hmm. I've attended VMworld five times. I've been to multiple VMUGs, and uh, that's that's where I go to. So it's peers, peers. You know, a lot of yeah. information from peers. Uh, some LinkedIn, not not on, not on not Twitter. You don't get your information from Twitter? No, no, I never got into Twitter. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. All right, Jeremy, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, sharing the, the case study of uh, Dairy Lee. Good luck going forward, and uh, it was really a pleasure having you. Well, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. This is Silicon Angle's The Cube. We're here live at Gillette Stadium. This is the VTUG Winter Warmer. We'll be right back. Live mobile studio, and we bring it to events, and we say we extract.